Hello everyone, Geriatric here, along with Gary, and tonight it was a movie, it was kind of a big one, even within the gaming world, and that was Assassin's Creed. Now, yes, Gary, Assassin's Creed is a video game. It has like six sequels. Anyway, um, the basic story is 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 kind of interesting. Um, Callum Lynch, played by the wonderful M Michael Fassbinder, is about to be executed. A criminal who, as we see kind of earlier in the film, uh, has had a very disturbing moment in his childhood. But after the supposed execution, uh, Callum wakes up with in a very familiar setting to anybody to the Assassin's Creed, in um, the headquarters of a, a Espargo, I think it was, uh, Industries, who have a machine called the Animus. Now, the Animus can have a person relive the memories of their ancestors, and we are talking hundreds of years into the past. And Callum begins to discover that his lineage, or his ancestor, uh, that this organization is very keen on is Aguilar from uh, the time of the Spanish Inquisition. Um, now, interestingly enough, when I, when I first saw the trailers for this movie, I thought, okay, this is a great idea for a movie. Um, the Assassin's Creed games have a very definite story. It's not like something like Mario Brothers or something where there's kind of a little bit of a story, but you have to kind of make up most of it. Um, if they just followed the Assassin's Creed story, then they'd have a good movie. But actually, this is a different story. Uh, these are characters that we have never seen. Well, one of them we've seen before. But uh, these, this character in this time period is actually very different. Uh, as we know, Enzo in the uh, uh, Italian Renaissance. Um, but it works very well because you just have to follow the rules set up in the original Assassin's Creed uh, video games. Um, Michael Fassbender is a perfect choice for this role because basically this role, uh, he has to play two roles. He has to play Callum, a guy who we've seen who knows nothing about being an assassin, and his ancestor, Aguilar, who is in a different time period, in a different set of circumstances, and it is who a trained assassin. And he pulls it off brilliantly. He, he switches very flawlessly from character to character. Um, making them similar, but not so similar as if it's, okay, and now this is just Callum dressed up in, you know, Spanish Inquisition robes. Uh, Marion uh, Colter, I don't know if I pronounced that right, uh, plays Sophia, one of the scientists uh, who runs uh, the Ana, uh, Animagus, anim, the Animus, Animus, not Animagus, Animus. Um, and she does very well. Um, Michael Fassbender and uh, Marion Coulter was actually in uh, Justin Kurzel, uh, the director of this film's uh, wonderful Dun Macbeth. Um, and she plays a very good role. This is a woman who is very mysterious, who we only see and then for a very brief second and then suddenly are thrust into this world where she is kind of our connection to it. Can we trust her? What is her motives? Um, and she plays very well. She is, you know, always a great actress in, you know, tons of films. Um, I mean, the most one that comes to mind first is, of course, Inception, where she played Leonardo DiCaprio's wife. Um, Jeremy Irons is in this as well, and he plays that character I told you about, the one we've seen before, Alan Rick Rikin, who is the head of this whole project. Um, Jeremy Irons, always a fantastic actor, uh, was in Batman and Superman just recently as Alfred and became my favorite Alfred in all of, uh, media interpretations of Batman. And he plays a very good villain because he has to, um, he can be very sinister, he can be in the shadows, but he still has to make his presence felt. Um, uh, this movie was very good. Um, it's kind of, you know, almost cliche now to say this, that video game movies, you kind of cringe when you hear that somebody's making a video game uh, movie adaption because there's there's a lot of terrible ones out there. Um, but recently we have seen some good ones. Uh, I actually liked Warcraft, even though some of the critics didn't like it, but I felt it was very true to the story. Um, but you can put this one in the good category. This is a film that is very dedicated to what it wants to be and knows what it wants to be. The fighting scenes are packed full of action. 
Um, one of the one of the things I did want to say, which I was actually blown away blown away with uh, with this being an American movie, is whenever we go into the past to see Aguilar in Spain, everything is subtitled. It's all spoken in Spanish. Nobody's speaking English. And I thought that was a very bold choice for this movie, that it, it forces the person to say, okay, we're not just going to give you English or have them say, oh, look, they're speaking Spanish, but you can magically understand them so it comes out in English. And I really like that. It was it's, It kind of brings you more into the past. Um, the Assassin's Creed games, uh, which, I, which I am a fan of, I always am amazed when you think, you know, a story's done or a character's done and you think, okay, where are they going to go now that they are able to keep reinventing themselves in different time periods? Um, I really like the idea, and I mean, it's a fascinating idea that a person could, could theoretically in their DNA and everything carry not only the traits of, you know, physical traits such as dominant hair, eye color, but also the memories of their ancestors. And I always thought that was just a really amazing idea because if you know, we are the products of evolution and the behaviors and instincts we have are carried on from our ancestors thousands of years ago, why couldn't you also just remember more recent things? And Assassin's Creed always took it. Yes, it is a science fiction movie. I mean, it, when Callum first goes into the Animus for the first memory, I think it literally takes him maybe three minutes to find this memory. Um... But yeah, it was, a, it was a very good movie, and I'm very impressed with what they did. I like the choices they made. Uh, the actors are top-notch. Uh, director, as I said, um, kind of a newer director. I think he's only directed about three movies before this. But he does a very good job. He knows what he, story he wants to tell, and in a way that's respectful to the video game and its fans, but also becoming something a little different. And it's, it, it is a balancing act with video game movies. You kind of have to say, okay, are we going to be straight and tell a story and pick a game where there is a set story? Uh, think of Uncharted. Uncharted would make a great movie because you could just literally film 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Um, or are you going to take a game where there's not really a lot of story, but maybe we can make something out of it? And, you know, sometimes, you know, you get Super Mario Bros. It's a set. I love Nintendo. You've seen me play it, but Super Mario Brothers the movie is just just terrible. Um, so yeah, go check it out. Um, interestingly enough, uh, rated PG thirteen, and while there is violence, um, it's it's not much very gory violence. Like trust me, with a name like Assassin's Creed, a lot of people are gonna die, but it's not overly grotesque violence. And I said rated PG thirteen, so. Um, if the kids, if you got older kids, maybe 13 or older, maybe take them. But if you're a fan of the series, uh, please go check it out. It, it is a action-packed movie and very true to the game. And, you know, sometimes with video game movies, that's all you can really ask for. So this is Jerry Atrick with Gary reminding you to keep it retro. And also, if you're not going to the movies, what are you doing with your life? Uh, it for a rebel person by the name of Cassian Andor, um, you see a side of the rebellion who you've never seen before. These are assassins, these are s saboteurs, and people who, while they have a good cause in joining the rebellion, are very dark and 